Welcome back. Uh, we spoke about this quite a while ago, but I thought it was pretty interesting to revisit uh, the gold-silver ratio as uh, gold has been very strong over the past uh, couple weeks. Now, the gold-silver ratio is a tool that's used to determine really what is the better value, whether it's better to buy gold or silver. Now, generally speaking, the metals tend to move uh, in similar fashion. Uh, typically, gold and silver tends to move up when the dollar goes down as it acts as a hedge towards inflation. And the way we calculate the gold-silver ratio is very simply we divide one ounce of gold, and in this example, $1,800 an ounce, uh, by one ounce of silver, which is $25 an ounce. So divide 1800 by 25, we get a level of 72. Now, historically speaking, uh, the average gold-silver ratio is around 55. Now, when the gold-silver ratio is above 55, it means that gold, relatively speaking, uh, is higher than silver, has a, has a, is more expensive, I should say, and therefore silver becomes more attractive. And when the gold-silver ratio is below 55, then gold becomes more attractive. So gold is, relatively speaking, uh, generally speaking, undervalued. Taking a look at the chart going back to the year 2000, uh, the yellow line represents the price of gold, the green line represents the price of silver, and then the black dotted line represents a gold-silver ratio. And we can see, for example, we go down to 2010, uh, the gold-silver ratio fell down to a level around 33, and that showed us that gold became much, much more of a value than silver was. Now, uh, incidentally, what happened was that both metals went down. But I think if we were to look at the math, we would see that because gold, relatively, uh, generally speaking, was relatively undervalued, that silver went down to a greater degree. Conversely, uh, we can see more recently, around 2019, the gold-silver ratio uh, popped up to around 126, 126, that silver was very much undervalued, and silver really was the good buy at that time. Silver went down to a level uh, price around $12 an ounce, uh, and gold uh, did not go down as much. Gold went down to around $1,475, $1,500 an ounce. Subsequently, we know now that gold is a little bit above $1,800 an ounce. Meanwhile, silver has skyrocketed up to around $25. Now, we take a look at the purple line. That's the gold-silver ratio. And then the yellow line represents the price of gold. And again, when the ratio goes down, it means that in this case, for example, the purple line is trending lower. It means gold represents a better value. Rel uh, generally speaking, it's relatively underpriced. Uh, now, we can see that gold has really extended a long, steady trend to the upside. We hit lows around 1600 in early November, and now all of a sudden we're above 1800, 1825 uh, in the middle of December. What th this has occurred in part due to a falling dollar. Now, just to give a little background, what's happened is that the Federal Reserve has been raising rates very aggressively. The bond market has been reacting, interest rates are going higher, and the dollar alongside with interest rates has gone up. Now that we're reaching what many believe to be the end of the Federal Reserve's tightening cycle, uh, now we see bond yields are coming down to some extent. You know, depending on the maturity, the dollar has become very weak. And as the dollars become weak, now gold and silver are back in play. Now, take a look at the price of silver, which is the white line. Compare that to the gold-silver ratio, which is this purple line. And we can see that as gold-silver ratio has gone down, uh, silver has really skyrocketed. Now again, as the ratio goes higher, that tells us that gold is going up. But now that we see the ratio is going down, silver is actually much stronger. So we take a look. Again, early November, uh, late October, early November, we, see, we saw silver hit a level of $18 an ounce. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, we're up to $24 an ounce. So percentage-wise, uh, it's a very significant move. Now we take the blue line, uh, which is the gold-silver ratio, and the orange line, which is the S&P 500. And we can see, generally speaking, uh, this ratio tends to move in. Well, it was moving uh, coincidentally in line with the S&P 500. Both lines are trending uh, to the downside. But now that we see 
that uh, the S&P 500 is now trying to mount some sort of recovery over here, we can see this ratio still moving down. And the point being is that we can't always deduce what is a right trade just from looking at a, you know, a couple of these charts. We really have to take in consideration what is the macroeconomic story here. Now, generally speaking, silver tends to perform better when we see a strong economy. Silver is used not only as a hedge for inflation, but it's used in electronics, it's used in jewelry. Gold, of course, is as well, but silver tends to perform better during strong economic times. When economic times are bleak, gold tends to outperform. So now we see a strong stock market, we tend to see that gold-silver uh, ratio react. Not really according to what we would suspect, but I think it's really early on in this new trend. Uh, now we see here, there's a number of different histogram bars. Focus on the blue histogram bars. That's the 90 day uh, performance of gold. That's how gold tends to perform over the forward looking 90 days. If we were to buy gold now, how would it behave in the next 90 days depending on the gold silver ratio? So we can see that when we have a gold silver ratio around 65, 70, all the way up to around 85, we tend to see inferior returns. But then when we see uh, the gold silver ratio move above 85, 90 and even higher than that, we tend to see better returns. We also tend to see very good returns for gold when the gold silver ratio is very low, meaning 40, 35, 30. And remember again, when we get when we hit the, those low levels, that tells us that gold is very much undervalued. Now, Focusing on the 30, 35, 40 level, we can see how great the returns are for gold. Compare that to silver, which is really not the case. Silver tends to perform best only when we see a gold-silver ratio of 90 or better. And again, that tells us that gold, generally speaking, is overvalued and silver, generally speaking, is undervalued. So we really want to try to buy silver when we see a gold-silver ratio better than 90, 95. If we see the gold silver ratio below 55, down into the 40s and even 30s, then gold would be the better buy. At least that's what the data suggests. Uh, now we compare the gold silver ratio to the S&P 500. Now, again, it looks very similar to the price of silver uh, in that we see superior returns. We have the 7, 14, 30, 60 day returns, and then the blue lines are the 90 day returns. We tend to see the best returns when you have a gold silver ratio above 95. Now, I should preface all this by saying that we normally don't see gold silver ratios above 90, 95. We did see that take place uh, in the very uh, fast stock market sell off in 2019. And that's when silver really plummeted. And of course, stocks also uh, were very weak. So this is not necessarily representative of a lot of data going back. But if we happen to see another dramatic stock market sell off sometime in the future and you see a gold silver ratio above 95, 100, I think that probably would also bode well, at least uh, for the time being for uh, stocks. Also, take a look at the blue line. That's the S&P 500 and then uh, the price of gold, which we see a very strong correlation. And what we're seeing now, uh, notice how all of a sudden uh, the S&P 500 has started to move higher at the same time gold has. That is happening for the same reason, in my opinion. It's because we're reaching towards the end of uh, the interest rate tightening cycle, the latter part of this year, maybe the early part of 2023. Gold is moving higher as the dollar goes down and then perhaps stocks are reacting to that as well, anticipating a lower interest rate environment sometime in the future. So to recap again, it's not something we can always deduce a trade from, but if we take a look historically, and we know that when the gold-silver ratio is below the average of around 40 to 50, 55, then gold becomes a better buy. And that when uh, we see the gold silver ratio above the 90, 95 level and even higher than that, then silver is a better buy. Uh, now, of course, currently uh, we see the gold silver ratio on 75. So generally speaking, silver is still a better buy. But as soon as we go down to that 55 level, if we do, then I would, I would prefer to look at gold as a, a better value. We hope this has been helpful. We look forward to seeing you back soon.